The popular TV series Game of Thrones introduced us to a fictional world of kings, queens, and kingdoms. It portrayed how these kingdoms were formed and what led to their downfall. However, in reality, some kingdoms have fallen over time, but their descendants still exist. But the big question is, which royal families are those? And who are the descendants? To answer these questions, we've compiled a list of the ex-royals in the world whose families once ruled a mighty kingdom. So without further ado, let's start. At number 12 on the list, we have the Kingdom of Greece and its royal family ruling family, the House of Glucksburg. The House of Glucksburg ruled Greece from the 19th century to the late 20th. The dynasty reign began with the accession of George I in 1863 after he was elected to the throne as the second son of King Christian IX of Denmark. During their rule, Glucksburg dynasty oversaw many historical events, including two world wars. However, the monarchy also experienced periods of instability and was replaced by the Second Hellenic Republic, all in 1929, only to be restored in 1935 following a vote. The reigns of the Glucksburg kings were also marked by foreign influence and instability, which contributed to the perception of the monarchy as foreign dynasty with weak cultural roots in Greece. King Constantine II, the last monarch, faced significant challenges during his reign, which led to the country's destabilization. As a result, the monarchy was abolished following the constitutional referendum in 1974, and Greece became a parliamentary democracy. The royal family was stripped of their titles and royal status, and the Greek monarchy was seen as a foreign dynasty that failed to establish strong cultural roots within the Greek nation. However, members of the Greek royal family are still alive and active in public life. Next, we go to the Kingdom of Italy and its ruling family, the House of Savoy. This period in Italy in history was significant as the monarch was established in 1861 and lasted until the announcement of the Italian Republic in 1946. The House of Savoy played a crucial role in this era overseeing the country's unification and establishment of a national monarch. It's one of Europe's oldest royal dynasties, originating from the 11th century in the Western Alps. In addition to its presence across different parts of Europe, the House of Savoy's significance grew as it was granted ducal status within the Holy Roman Empire in 1416 and later the royal title in the 18th century. Despite its historical significance, the House of Savoy faced many challenges, including periods of weak rulership and foreign occupation. The monarch's rule was further diminished during the fascist regime of Benito Mussolini. Following World War II, public support of the monarchy dropped further. As a result, a 1946 referendum resulted in the establishment of a republic, mandating the monarchy's rule. Nevertheless, the House of Savoy continues to exist, even without any official role in the governance of Italy. Also, the family's lineage includes notable members, such as Prince Victor Emmanuel of Savoy and his son, Manuel Philbert, Prince of Venice. Next, we have the Kingdom of Bulgaria, which is the House of saxe Cogburg and Gotha ruled. The kingdom was established as a constitutional monarchy October 5th, 1908, and was abolished in 1946. The royal family, which belonged to the Kohari branch of the House of saxe Coburg and Gotha, came to power with Prince Ferdinand of saxe Coburg and Gotha Kohari and was chosen as the ruling prince and later Tsar of Bulgaria. Interestingly, the Kohari branch was established after the marriage of Prince Ferdinand of saxe Coburg and Gotha and Princess Maria Antonia Kohara de Kasprak. During World War I, Bulgaria allied with Germany, which had significant implications for its post-war standing. However, World War II made a significant turning point for Bulgaria. During the war, the Communist Party took over Bulgaria in 1944, and the Kingdom of Bulgaria was officially abolished following the referendum held September 15, 1946. The the last czar was exiled. The People's Republic of Bulgaria was established, but the communist regime lasted until 1989 when it collapsed paving the way for the liberalization of the market and subsequent economic crisis in the 1990s. However, after the fall of communism, the former Tsar Simeon II returned to the country and served as Bulgaria's prime minister from 2001 to 2005. He's currently head of the Kingdom of Bulgaria. Next on the list is the Kingdom of Hungary and its ruling family, the House of Habsburg. The Kingdom of Hungary has a rich and intricate history that lasted almost a millennium, from its establishment in the year 1000 to its dissolution in the 20th century. The Habsburgs, who annexed the whole kingdom in 1699 after liberating from the Ottoman Turks, were the rulers for a long time. The 19th century saw the Hungarian War of Independence in 1848 and 1849, which failed. However, following the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867, Hungary gained equal status with Austria, enjoying considerable autonomy. But the Austro-Hungarian Empire was dissolved at the end of World War I, and Hungary was declared a republic in 1918. 
1918, with this, the Habsburg families ruled over Hungary had ended. After World War II, Hungary fell under Soviet influence and became a communist state. However, the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 led to political change in Hungary and transitioned to a multi-party parliamentary democracy. Though Hungary is now a democracy, the people of Hungary still speak fondly about Habsburgs. Thankfully, some of the members of the House of Habsburg are still alive today, and they're involved in various public and cultural activities. Karl von Habsburg is one such prominent member of the Habsburg family and the head of the House of Habsburg Lorraine. Karl is involved in various charitable and cultural activities himself. At number eight, we have the Kingdom of Romania and the ruling family, the House. Ohen Zolern Sigmaringen. The Kingdom of Romania was a constitutional monarchy in Eastern Europe from 1881 to 1947. The monarchy was based on inheritance residing in the family. However, the constitution prevented women from becoming the rulers. Moreover, the people could choose a king from Western European royal families in the absence of a male heir. But it was after World War I that Romania achieved its greatest territorial extent, uniting with Transylvania and Bukovina in 1918-1920. However, some of its territories ceded in 1940 to the Soviet Union, Hungary, and Bulgaria. Interestingly, King Michael I was the last monarch of Romania, abdicating in 1947 as the country transitioned to a socialist republic under the communist rule following Soviet occupation. The abolition of the monarchy marked the end of an important era in the Romanian history. King Michael I did not abdicate voluntarily, but was forced to do so December 30th, 1947, due to immense pressure from the Communist Party of Romania, which the Soviet Union backed. The House of Romania, or the Sigmaringen family, has descendants. Loretta, the custodian of the Romanian crown, is the family's current head. Her father, Michael I, was the last king of Romania. Next, we have the German Empire and its ruling family, the House Hohenzollern. The German Empire was founded January 18th, 1871, with William I of Prussia becoming the German Emperor, and it ended in 1918. The House Hohenzollern was the ruling dynasty of Bradensburg, Prussia, and later the German Empire and Romania. It played a significant role in uniting Germany. Apart from ruling Germany, they also ruled Bradensburg, Prussia from 1415 to 1918. Interestingly, the Hohenzollern were known for their military skill and developed a strong and efficient bureaucracy. This militarism played a crucial role in Germany's unification and the establishment of the German Empire. However, the last days of this family were full of troubles. The kingdom was headed by William II, who led Germany in the World War I, but subsequently, he abdicated into the war's final days and was exiled to the Netherlands. The German Revolution of 1918 led to the Hohenzollern's abdication and the formation of the Weimar Republic, ending the German monarchy. However, despite their downfall, this family still enjoys public support. The family has descendants who are involved in cultural and charitable activities. Greg Frederick, the current head, is the great-great-grandson of the last German emperor. Next on the list, we have the Kingdom of Yugoslavia, ruled by the House of Kara Dordavec. Following the end of World War I and the collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia was formed in 1918 and dissolved in 1945. However, its ruling family, the House, of Karador Davik was founded much earlier in 1804 by Karador Petrovic, who fought for Serbia's independence from the Ottoman Empire. The dynasty received support from the Russian Empire and opposed the Austrian-backed Obrenovic dynasty, creating a rivalry that dominated Serbian politics throughout the 19th century. In 1903, Karadode's grandson, Peter I, was chosen to ascend to the Serbian throne, and the kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovs claimed him as their king. This led to the formation of Yugoslavia. Under Alexander I, Peter I's son, the kingdom was renamed Yugoslavia in 1929 to unify the diverse ethnic groups under a single national identity. However, the monarch faced great challenges in 1934 and was later overthrown by the communist-led government in 1945 due to the turmoil and the occupation by the Axis powers during World War II. The monarch was abolished without a referendum and King Peter II was removed from power. Despite this, the family still remains active today, and Crown Prince Alexander is involved in various philanthropic and diplomatic activities. Next on this list, we have the Kingdom of Nepal and its ruling family. The Shah Dynasty. The Kingdom of Nepal was founded in 1768 by Prithvi Narayan Shah, who was ruled by the Shah Dynasty until 2008. The kingdom lasted for 240 years until the monarchy was abolished in 2008, which originated from the Rajput Dynasty of the Shatavad Kingdom. India oversaw Nepal's transition from the traditional aristocratic nation to the modern democratic 
democratic constitutional monarchy. During their reign, they implemented various reforms and contributed to Nepal's politics, economics, and administrative landscape. They managed to establish a centralized political system by integrating regional and local elites into a central administration based in Kathmandu, the seat of the ruling Shah family. However, the kingdom faced numerous challenges, including the Nepalese civil war, the conflict between government forces and the insurgent forces of the Communist Party of Nepal. In its first session on May 28, 2008, the Nepalese Constitutional Assembly abolished the kingdom and declared the Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal in its place. Jayendra Bir Bakram Shah Dev, the last king of the Shah dynasty of Nepal, has retired from public life and does not hold any official position in the current government of Nepal. Next on the list, we have the Kingdom of Libya and its Senussi dynasty. The Kingdom of Libya was officially established December 24, 1951 as a constitutional monarchy in North Africa, which lasted until September 1, 1969. It was founded under the leadership of King Idris I, who was both the country's first and last king. Idris I, born as Muhammad Idris al Sunesi, was the grandson of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ali as Sunesi, the founder of the Sunesi Sufi order. Interestingly, this religious order played a significant role in the region's resistance against colonial powers and later became the foundation of the Senesi family's legitimacy. Additionally, the British declared Idris I as the emir in 1949, and he declared himself the king of the newly independent Libya in 1950. Furthermore, the discovery of significant oil reserves in the late 1950s transformed Libya's economy, making it one of the wealthiest countries in Africa. Over the monarchy's rule ended abruptly when a group of military officers led by Gaddafi overthrew the kingdom. Gaddafi established a socialist government based on Arab nationalism and direct democracy. However, after the fall of Gaddafi in 2011, Mohammed el Sanasi, the current candidate for the throne, has become an active commentator on Libyan affairs and has expressed his support for constitutional monarchy based on the pre-revolutionary constitution. At number three, we have the Kingdom of Laos and its ruling family, Lang Zhang Hom Kao Dynasty. The Lao Royal Family led the Kingdom of Laos under the rule of Lang Zhang from 1904 to 1975. King Sisavang Vong, the founder of the modern royal family, was related to the King of Laos and held various official and ceremonious duties. However, the Kingdom of Lang Zhang itself dates back to 1353, was established by Phan de Gum. During its peak, it was one of the largest kingdoms in Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, a struggle between the royal Lao government and the communist Pethet Lao, backed by the Soviet Union and Vietnam, changed the country's course. The conflict ended with the victory of Pethet Lao, leading to the abolition of the monarchy and the establishment of the Lao People's Democratic Republic, December 2nd, 1975. After the abolition of the kingdom, the royal family members were arrested. It's believed that the king, queen, and crown prince died in a re-education camp, although there had been no official confirmation. Currently, the surviving members of the family, based in France, are working towards changing the government in Laos. Prince Soli Vong Zavang, the grandson of the last king, is the current head of the Lao throne. Next, we have the Kingdom of Lithuania and its ruling family, the House of Mindaugas. The Kingdom of Lithuania was established in the 13th century when Mindaugas united the Lithuanian tribal lands. Later, in 1569, the Union of Lubin merged the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania into the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. The single state lasted until late in the 18th century. During World War I, Germany occupied Lithuania by the end of 1915. The Council of Lithuania declared independence February 16, 1918. However, the establishment of a Lithuanian monarchy was attempted but ultimately failed. The council voted to offer the throne to William Karl, Duke of Urach, who accepted and took the regal name of Mindaugas II, but never visited Lithuania. But the monarchy was abolished November 2, 1918. During World War II, Lithuania was caught between the aggressions of larger powers, and after the war, Lithuania, along with Latvia and Estonia, were re-annexed by the Soviet Union. However, March 11, 1990, Lithuania signed the act of the re-establishment of the state of Lithuania, again declaring independence. But it wasn't until September 6, 1991, that the Soviet Union recognized Lithuania's independence. Karl's living heir, Inigo, is technically in line for that brief throne, although he only visited the country for the first time in 2009 when he was 47. At number one here on our list, we have the Kingdom of Portugal, ruled by the House of Braganza. The kingdom was established in 1139 and lasted until the proclamation of the Republic in 1910. The House of Braganza was founded in 1442 and became prominent in 1640 when Joao IV became the King of Portugal. Under his rule, Portugal fought against Spanish rule and ended the Iberian Union, and the Braganza dynasty would rule Portugal until 1910. King Joao V's reign 
was a time of great power and wealth for the Portuguese monarch, as he spent extravagantly to glorify Portugal in his reign. However, the monarchy faced many challenges, including the Lisbon earthquake in 1755, the Napoleonic invasions, and the loss of Brazil, which weakened its institution. Despite these challenges, the assassination of King Carlos I in 1908 by Republican activists was a significant event that led to the eventual fall of the monarchy. Two years later, in 1910, the Portuguese Republic was proclaimed, and the Braganza, including King Manuel II, went into exile. The current head of the House of Braganza is Dom Rosario, who holds the title of Duke of Braganza. Interestingly, the heir to the Portuguese throne was traditionally given the title of Duke of Braganza, a tradition that continues in the claim to the throne. Thanks for watching the video. Comment down below your favorite part and let us know. Also, press the subscribe button and bell icon for regular updates.